get my six. What's up, everybody? Just walking around the homestead here, eating it. We were setting this place up six years or so ago. It was our goal to get to where you couldn't go more than like 10 feet without just being able to pick something off of a tree or a bush, pull something up out of the ground and eat it. Of course, not everything's ripe yet. We got some delicious raspberries that are ripe. These pears have a while to go. We got apples, everything. Horse flies, deer flies, whatever. So I'm just doing a quick walk around here. Uh, listen, people are nuts. And I, I believe that I have come up with a new form of psychiatry or psychology. Uh, it's called, I don't know, I haven't named it yet, but it has something to do with uh, the real you or the real us coming out uh, when we get behind the wheel of a car. Listen, um, it's funny. Uh, people can say anything. They can tell you anything. They can tell you how nice they are. They can tell you how kind they are. And they can talk about the importance of being kind to others. Be nice to everybody. And it doesn't cost a thing. It's free. Then you put these people in a car. Watch the way they drive. Watch the way they back into other vehicles in, in, in parking lots at like the grocery store. And then make sure, look around real quick. Make sure no one's looking so they can drive away. How many times have you seen that? I've seen that a million times. Not a million, but I've seen it enough. I remember the first time I saw it, I was shocked. I couldn't believe this woman was doing it. Second time I saw it, I stepped in front of the car and wouldn't let him leave. And I made him wait until the other person came out saying, give him the insurance uh, information. So uh, it might not be the smartest thing to do. Listen, people are so crazy. And I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened this morning with a driver and me. And, uh, Maybe I shouldn't have done it, but I'm glad I did. And I think you're gonna probably agree with me, especially if I tell you a little bit about this individual that it happened with. But here's something creepy as hell that happened with my sister, one of my sisters yesterday over there in Appalachistan. So she sends me a text and she says, OMG, I think I just might've been uh, like part of an active shooting. And I'm like, huh? And she goes, I'm driving down the interstate and I see this van parked uh, beside the road. And I thought, huh, that doesn't seem right. There's not supposed to be a, a van parked right there by the side of the interstate. And so she looks over and the back doors of this van are open. Sorry, I heard something in the woods back here behind me. Remember, we must always be on the lookout of him, her, it, or they. So, uh, man, it's crazy. I want you to watch for the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch. It may or may not be in the woods back here, but at the same time, I want to show you the lovely view of my homestead as I do a morning walk around here. Everything's coming up so nicely. So green, it's lush, it's hot and it's humid. Got this heat wave coming through the East Coast. Man, they weren't kidding. So anyway, my sister says she goes by this fan and she looks over and there's a guy in there laying on his stomach with a rifle and and for a minute it was like pointed right at her and she goes by and she's like oh my god i can't believe i just looked down the barrel of the rifle there's no way that's real and so she was so confused she's like what did i just see what just happened to me well a couple hours later it's all over her local news some lunatic uh and she even sent me the link i mean this is totally true story uh some lunatic took a minivan out to the interstate took the entrance ramp on the interstate pulled off the side of the interstate got down in like some kind of sniper position in the back of his van with opened the doors and started shooting at cars going by randomly and um i guess a law enforcement officer went by and saw it so he stopped called for backup and they ended up having you know, police officers from several different county units, city units, state troopers, and even some DNR officers who heard the call were close enough to get there. Something like 20, 20 uh, law enforcement officials responded to this call. They took the guy out. He's, he's no longer among the living. And uh, one of the officers was shot in the thigh. 
uh, had to has to have he was having surgery yesterday for the muscle damage and uh, he's gonna live um, but people are nuts people are nuts and my sister said that's like the third time this year that she's and she works with mental health uh, so I guess yeah she would be, be in situations where that's more common than for, for, for than it is for folks who aren't in that industry but listen I'm gonna tell you uh, you know, I made a video here just a couple of weeks ago about how there's one, one lady in particular um, Who does intentionally try to hit me with her car and I know it's intentional and so I've gotten I've solved that by no longer running on the main road I will either Ride my mountain bike out to a dirt road and there's so many of them close by to me Or I'll drive my truck out to one of them and park somewhere where I'm able to park and I've gotten permission I've talked to people. They're like, oh, yeah, no problem. Go ahead um, and then I run out there and, and that's alleviated that issue because there's now there's like maybe one or two cars I see in a week and um, the roads are so uh, rocky and gravelly you just can't go fast on them and so the people don't drive like that and but uh, man I was out yesterday and I'm getting to what happened this morning what I probably shouldn't have done but what I'm glad I did I was out there yesterday on this one dirt road though and it comes down this steep hill and then there's a stop sign and then you can turn right or left onto the main road the hard top road and uh it's a it's a blind turn where the sharp turn is from one direction man i saw this dump truck that hauls gravel come barreling down this dirt road and 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 uh I was watching him because it's right there at the stop sign and I said man this guy isn't going to stop I was actually just finished my run getting ready to get in the truck come home and he looks over at me and I wave at him and you just see his eyes light up what he was saying is oh you know sh word someone saw me driving like this and no he didn't stop for that stop sign he ripped around that turn so fast truck almost went up on on uh, two tires on the left side, but I, he took a right. I'm telling you, if there would have been a car coming around that blind turn, there's no way it or that dump truck could have stopped. It's a lightly traveled road. It's an old country road. There's not a whole lot of traffic. So I guess these people just assume, uh, well, the odds are there's not gonna be anything coming. But if there had been, let me tell you this, and sometimes there is because you got those little wooden crosses every four or five miles around this, these old country roads from where some, somebody was coming. You know what I'm saying? But here's what happened this morning. And maybe I shouldn't have done it, but I'm glad I did. And to be honest with you, I've kind of been fantasizing about this a lot. Um, m most of the people who almost kill me uh, are women. And I've often thought, man, I wish a dude would do this, right? Um, but, but sometimes dudes almost do it too. But more, more times than not, they don't even know I'm there because they're on their cell phone. They never even saw me. They don't even know they almost killed me. The one woman that does try to really literally hit me, she's doing it on purpose. Um, there's another woman who almost hits me all the time, but she's unaware. She doesn't know. She's always on her phone. She's always FaceTiming somebody, so she never sees me. Well, this morning I'm cycling because I have a busted blood vessel on the top of my left foot i ran five miles the other day my shoelaces were too tight and i could feel like a bit of a discomfort but i didn't want to stop and adjust it because i had a really good pace going so i ended up busting a blood vessel it's fine it's not a serious injury but i'm just not gonna be able to run for a couple of days so i'm biking right but i have less problems when i'm out biking than i do cycling because when you or when i'm then when i'm running because when you cycle you cycle on the same side of the road that the cars come on right so they're generally at least looking to make sure they don't go off the side of the road. They see you as a cyclist. Hope you don't mind. I'm gonna stand here in the shade for a minute. It's already almost 90 degrees, humid as can be. So uh, I'm cycling and I, I'm on this part of the road that it's like a snake, it's snakes. And I'm coming down off this one high point. You can see for like a mile and a half, they're just snake type turns, um, no sharp bends. And it's in a valley and it's beautiful. There are these big, beautiful horse farms. Well, I see this other vehicle coming from the other side, and this person was coming down from the top, snaking. Well, I guess uh, this individual figured that if you just cut through the center of every turn, like if you go around, you know, squeeze the right inside of the turn when, you know, you're on your side of the road, but when there's a turn going to the left, this it's, it's a man. Finally had my wish come true. He could see there were no other vehicles. 
So he was cutting to the inside of the left turn, completely on the wrong side of the road. Okay, I see him coming and I'm like, well, surely he can see me. Uh, and surely he's not going to do this if we meet in that next turn up there. He's not going to come on my side of the road, right? Wrong. So I'm in this turn, and here he comes. Here he comes right at me on my side of the road, and I'm as, as far over to the right as I can get, right? From the way he's, he's coming at me, he is purely on the left side of the road as he's driving, which is not legal. He is clearly in the wrong. I'm looking because as a runner or cyclist, when you see oncoming traffic, you're supposed to make eye contact to confirm that driver sees you because if they're not looking at you, they might not see you and you might need to dive out of the road or go out of the road. Well, I look, this guy's making eye contact with me. He clearly sees me and he is not getting over on his side of the road. There was nothing coming from either direction. So I had nowhere else to go. I, I, I had this much pavement before I was off the road. So I start waving my left hand like this. I go like this and I have it in close to my body because there was not, I couldn't go like this. He would have hit my arm. So I'm like this, trying to make sure he sees me. Well, he confirms he clearly sees me. He just goes like that and waves at me as he nearly nicks me with his side view mirror. Well, I turned around and I uh, displayed one of the fingers on this hand. Can you guess which one it was? Well, if you could, you would be correct. And I watched as he watched me do this through his side view mirror. Uh, so he clearly saw my hand signal, my sign language. Um, and again, it's confirmation that he clearly saw me, you know, because now he's looking back. And, and uh, well, here's what this individual didn't know. But here's what this individual clearly soon learned about one minute later. I know, I know exactly who he is. I know exactly where he lives. I know exactly how to find him. Now, this individual uh, thinks very highly of himself. Uh, he's very passive aggressive and he's very arrogant. Um, he's done nothing in his life to earn the, the arrogance. And listen, here's the thing. People who have achieved things, they're confident. And at times they come off as cocky, but rarely are they arrogant. Uh, they're they're just they're confident because they know who they are. They know what they know what they've done. This individual's never done squat, except uh, surround himself with people of means because he comes from that, and he's weaselled his way into the bed of multiple women of means who have supported him and taken care of him throughout his adult life. Once mommy and daddy no longer did. Okay, uh, I try. I know more about this guy than this guy could imagine anybody, especially someone he doesn't know personally, could know about him. Okay, so he almost kills me. I'm flipping him off. There, if you couldn't figure out which finger it was, I just told you. He's clearly looking at me through the mirror. So I snake my way around that turn. About a minute later, I hear a car engine. And I'm thinking, well, it's going to go around. It doesn't go around. I look in my little side view mirror there on the bike, and it's him in his little car, his little electric car, and he's pretty much touching my rear tire with his, with his front bumper. So I, I sit up on my bike, and he pulls up to the side, and he looks at me, and he's smiling all passive-aggressively, and he says, good morning. And I said, you're not as important as you think you are, and then I said his name, at which point his face went from being all pleasant and Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Passive Aggressive to, oh crap, this crazy mf -er knows who I am. I said, you're not as important as you think you are, first name, last name. I said, if you ever come around to turn on my side of the road like that and try to run me off the road or try to kill me again, I will box the face off of your skull. Do you understand that? He was, well, he wasn't so, he wasn't so bravado then. He wasn't, he wasn't all Mr. Big Shit then. And I said, try it. Try it again and find out. And then, so I just kept going and he backed up into a driveway we happened to be passing and he went the other way. He had nothing else to say and he got out of there as quick as he could, as he should have, because that was not a, an idle threat. 
That was not me talking trash. That was me making that man a promise. That, that was me making that man a very serious promise. And yes, I know who you are. I know where you live. You're easy to find. Should I have done it? Yeah, should have. Um, listen, here's the deal. They have a pecking order around here. I ain't part of it. I don't care what Fortune 400 company your ancestors founded. I don't care what Fortune 400 company the family you married into founded. I'm a hillbilly. I don't care. We got nothing to lose. You try me again, brah, and I will box the face off of your skull. Period. Hey, you call me a dumb hillbilly from West by God, Virginia? Bing, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. Try me.